Hey everybody, thanks for watching and uh, feels good to be back. I've been off for a while with some uh, headache issues, but I'm feeling much better. I uh, hope to start making some more videos that you guys can learn Plan Swift a little bit better. Um, so with that said, a lot of comments I've been getting have been, hey, I want to use different pricing structures for different areas. And normally that would be really hard to do. Uh, but I came up with an idea that you might like, okay? And what I did is I make this multiple database selection. This is just for the video, but let's say uh, you have a pricing structure for concrete, okay? And if you haven't learned how to use access database tables, go back a couple of videos, you'll find it in the advanced user tutorial, okay? But right now we have a pricing structure for item number one, which could be whatever you want it to be. It doesn't really matter. Right now I have an erosion control. Okay, and in area one, this item one costs 10 bucks, item two costs 20, and on down the line. Okay, in area two, because it's further out or who knows what, uh, that item is more expensive. And it could be concrete or lumber or rock or whatever. And I went up five bucks on each one of these items. Okay, and then area three, I went up another five bucks. So I have three different prices for the same thing. Item one is anywhere from 10 bucks on area one to 20 bucks on area three okay so I linked that to the database so now when you go to use uh, a count I'm gonna just count this one here okay and I'm gonna say okay this is uh, item one I'm gonna call it blah 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 okay doesn't really matter okay I have my production rate and all that but I can come here now and say hey I'm working in area two Okay, and I have it on the takeoff property. You can actually put this in your job property. So when you start the new job and ask you, hey, what area are you working in? You hit area two and everything that's linked to that database will select area two database and in the pricing structure and everything else. So pretty cool. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to choose area three. Okay. And I'm going to go back to, I can go to my input window now. You can see it pulled up area three description database. So I, I'm going to go ahead and choose item one, because that's what I'm working with here. And I'm going to go ahead and count. Boom, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. Let's count nine of them. Okay. So if I'm right, that should be 20 bucks. Right. See that part there? Remember the database? It was, it was either uh, 10, 15, or 20 bucks. And how I did this, let me, let, me, let me show you. I'll change it here. And let's go to area two. And then we'll go back in and reselect item number one. And it should be 15 bucks now. See, it changed it. So how I did this, okay, is obviously I created three different pricing structures. And inside my takeoff property, I told it, I said, okay, if it's, I give these checkbox options. And if you guys don't remember how to do that, it's a checkbox in your property, okay? So if that gets checked, it means true. Okay, there we go. So I put those three areas in there, made them visible. I gave them their own little awesome little uh, form layout page, you know, by doing that. And there's another video on how to do that. If you haven't got there, go back and, and go through that. So with that said, let's look at the part now, okay? So now the part is where the database is and it chose area two. How did it choose area two? How did it know? And that's what we're gonna look at. So I created these area, description area one, description area two, and three, and made them visible, okay? And, but what I did is I said, here in the input options, and there's a video on that, I said, if the check put, uh, input is checked on area one, then it will pull open up. In this case, it was area two, which equals true, okay? So all my databases for area one are in here, all my databases for area two are here, and all my databases for area three here. So how did I know that? Okay, because I did area one, two, and three, I did a CRAN parent clause from the part here up to the takeoff property, and that's what a grandparent clause is. And you guys know that because you've been watching for a while. So here we have, it because area two is checked, it is true. So again, if area two is checked and it's true, 
then this window is going to pop up and it's going to show you your databases. So with my databases in each one of these, I have selected the appropriate database. I made description and cost each visible, but it's going to set it in description. And you can see I spelt description and description area one and two different. Okay, and that's real important because descriptions. Uh, usually where I put my databases, but because there's three of them, I had to delineate between them, okay? And make sure you set the rest of your properties. In my case, uh, it was cost each. Actually, it needs to be description as well. I don't know why this one didn't have it. But anyway, so we have description so that when it chooses that part, when you choose item one, it should come up to here oh that's right I didn't set that code so you can you can actually reselect it and it should set it so there you go material item 5 material item 1 so what had happened is when I selected that description here in the database here it's going to set the description from the database it's going to put it in here and then this is going to carry up to there because it it set it through the database so anyways, it also set in this case vendor class and material class, which I like it to set, and the cost each. Um, so anyways, but this is the part level. This here is the job location. And again, the neat thing about this, if you didn't want to do it on each individual part, you could set it up in your job properties and refer that part via a code to the job property. So when you select whatever area you're working in, all the material that's uh, directed from there uh, will be selected for area one, two, three, or you can say 15 miles out, 20 miles out, and so on. If you have more questions and you want to uh, find out more about it or you have specific questions about this, be sure and comment. I'll try to get back to you. If I need to make another video, I'm happy to do it. It only takes a few minutes. And we'll help you guys through a lot of these kind of convoluted, uh, difficult but doable projects in PlanSwift so that you can make your estimating solution the best you can make it for your company. All right. Hey, thanks for watching. Uh, again, leave comments. Hopefully you liked it. Like the button if you want to subscribe. Even better. Thanks for watching. Bye.